Yesterday, Ursula von der Leyen. Today, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Dmitry Kuleba, speaking at the International Economic Forum in Davros, drew attention to the global food crisis for which Russia is responsible. It's Russia who bears sole responsibility for this global food crisis. And everyone should be standing uh, on this. Everyone who defends the rule of law and international system as it stands should stand on that position instead of looking for ways to quietly play into the hands of Russia. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has forced the leaders of other countries to take new measures to increase security. In Davos, representatives of the governments of Georgia and Moldova spoke about plans to join the European Union. We have no uh, other alternative. As I said, you know, this is the choice of Georgian people and we will do whatever we can. We will do the maximum in order to get closer to the European Union, to get closer to the ultimate goal, which is the uh, full-fledged membership of the European Union. We welcome any mechanism for bringing us closer together, improving our cooperation. Uh, we strongly believe that uh, membership in the European Union is uh, actually what uh, distributes this peace, stability, and value-based prosperity and, uh, you know, we want to be part of the free world and of this uh, EU family. In turn, yesterday evening, government delegations from Sweden and Finland came to the capital of Turkey, Ankara, to talk about the conditions for these Scandinavian countries to join NATO. Turkey had announced a veto, claiming that these countries are a haven for Kurdistan Workers' Party fighters and the initiators of the failed coup of 2016. The president of the European Council spoke today about the importance of Sweden's accession to the alliance. This is a pivotal moment for Sweden and the whole EU, and your application for NATO membership comes at a crucial time. The values of peace, prosperity, freedom and democracy are now at stake in our European soil, and these values were forged from the ashes of the two world wars, and your decision is strongly supported by the Swedish people. We respect your choice, we fully support your choice and your decision. Each day of the war in Ukraine means more suffering and destruction. That is why the German Foreign Minister, Anna-Leni Baerbrock, visiting Norway, appealed for continued vigilance. Ukrainians still need solidarity and support from the West in their fight against Russia. Obviously, the Russian president is not uh, willing to stop uh, bombing innocent uh, civilians. And that is why we have to make uh, sure that uh, Ukraine can defend their territory, defend uh, their citizens, and we keep supporting them as long um, as they need it. Um, and therefore, um, we are doing everything that citizens of Ukraine can live in peace and security as every other European uh, country. Politicians and experts have no doubt. Only solidarity pressure on Vladimir Putin can bring about results and bring the war to an end in Ukraine. The Russian president hoped to divide the West. The exact opposite happened. As President Matej Morawiecki emphasized during yesterday's speech in Davos, we are only united when we are strong.